their views on all of these things, judges' views, teachers' views, educators' views, one assumes they must be predicated on some model of the mind or some model of human nature that these people who are making decisions have instantiated and that, that they, are they, they are using as their... Right. But these, ver these, these vary. There, isn't, there aren't... <laughs> no, that's right. I mean, there are some people who believe that, you know, we should understand humans and everything else in society simply as machines and that they are predetermined machines that are playing out you know, the causal determination of the universe, uh, and therefore the concept of responsibility is an empty one because um, it is, uh, every action can be explained by every causal factor that came before it, um, and to ascribe responsibility to some concept of agency or self or person, um, it is, is an artificial construct that we've created. That's a model that somebody could take, which would then color, of course, their views about all of these things, and they might say, the key to understanding everything is to understand the causes. If we can understand all of the causes, then we have the complete answer, um, and we can descriptively explain why things are the way they are. The idea of normative decision-making is an empty one in that kind of universe, and obviously I'm, I'm operating from a slightly different perspective, which is um, that we can understand that there are natural causes that precede actions doesn't answer for us um, whether we assign values to those actions or not. Those are normative decisions that I think we have the capability to make. Um, so even if we come to the conclusion that none of us are free, we will continue to operate as if we are, and I think that that is a valuable thing to understand and to operate within that construct and constraint. Okay, just, just unpack two words for me, if you wouldn't mind, because I hear them used differently in different disciplines. One is the word normative. Yes. And the other is this term of art, agency. Yes. So it, could you just put them into a... <laughs> sure. Um, so descriptive means that you are describing the world without assigning any value to it. Normative means that um, it is not uh, the is but is the ought, right? So this is the way things ought to be. Um, we can understand uh, moral thought as being either, right? So some people may say moral decision making is nothing more than descriptive is of what's happening in the brain and instantiation of the brain versus um, a normative approach, which is to say uh, this is positing how things ought to be. Um, and the question is, where do we get that ought from? Is that ought something that is predetermined? Is that ought something that we are um, actively taking part in shaping? So that gets us to agency, right? Which is um, if you have the idea that you are a machine, that you have no control over your actions and it's all predetermined. Um, you would say you are not an agent of action, uh, instead you are a product of causes. Um, by contrast, you could say that if you um, believe that decisions and actions emanate from some aspect of you, something that you identify with, um, then we could say it is your agency that is bringing something about. And you might say, you know, if I have a reflex, right, to raise my hand, you knock my hand and I raise it, um, that that might not arise from my agency. But if uh, I decide to raise my hand to ask a question, that is an agent-driven action because I am consciously deciding to raise my hand um, and I am effectuating that decision through the actions that I take.